Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Jason and today we're doing a reaction about magic. So today I'm reacting to Robert Ramirez, a magician appearing on Penn & Teller's Fool Us. Apparently he'll be doing some kind of cell phone magic and I've never heard of him before. I know he was on Fool Us previously because this is all about magicians getting a second chance to fool Penn & Teller. So I literally know nothing about this guy. Anyway, let's just jump right into his reaction. Robert Ramirez. When people find out that I've been on Fool Us, the first question they always ask is, did you fool them? Tragically, the answer is no, and it hurts. As much as it is an honor just to be invited back, this time I really, really, really need to fool them. So, I've studied every act that's ever been on the show, I've examined my entire magic repertoire, I've even learned how to say the word repertoire, and I'm taking advantage of my experience as a theater performer. I've come up with a hook for my performance that is so bizarre, I think it will distract them, arouse their sympathy, and give me a great shot at fooling them. Penn and Teller, this time, I'm gonna fool you. I hope. Good luck. Sounds like he really wants it. Please welcome back to the Fool Us stage, Robert Ramirez. That's a nice back design. I like the colors. The last time I was on the stage, it was three years ago. I was young. I was careless. I was excited. And I didn't fool Penn and Teller that night. I was hurt. So, I've been living outside the stage door for the last three years, and I talked to every single performer who fooled you, and I studied their moves, I studied their techniques, I studied their methods. That way, I could figure out the secret to fooling you. So, when I'm done with my act tonight, and you ask, did you figure out my trick? I'm gonna tell you the same thing the producers of this show told me when I wanted to come back on this stage. No. <laughs> now, you might call me a little bit crazy, but the bottom line is, the only result that I will accept tonight is that I fooled both of you. So ladies and gentlemen, a round of applause for Penn and Teller as they join me on stage. <laughs> Now, while I've been living outside for three years, I discovered that the magic that I needed to fool both of you was at my fingertips with my cell phone. So now, due to legal reasons, I can't say the kind of phone I have, but we'll just call it a fruit phone, uh, and it'll make sense. Is that true? So, I'm gonna fool you by using the calculator of the phone, my lucky number seven, and a little bit of magic. Watch the seven furthest away from me. That looks cool. Next one. Also very visual. The third one from the center. Okay, I'm gonna show you guys how that works. Just to give you a little advantage. That's just how you erase a number on this type of phone. Most people don't know that. Tell her you can go ahead and try just, see there's no buttons you have to push. Exactly, everyone at home and in the audience right now is probably checking on their phone as well. It's very easy, there's no buttons you need to push. Now the re- What, that's so cool, I wanna try that. Let's see, add in the sevens. And then just, just easily, just, there we go. That's one gone. Pretty cool. You know, actually now I remember that I knew I learned about that feature that you could use it to erase numbers, but it never occurred to me to apply it to magic. That's so creative. I really like that idea. In fact, it, it looks, it's fun. It's very visual. You could definitely fool children with that or possibly adults. That's really cool that he shared that with us. I think it's pretty fun and I'm gonna enjoy doing it myself. I'm gonna show some people. I have friends, okay? Believe it. Anyway, back to the act. The reason I explain this, because when I do magic for like very little kids or TV personalities, sometimes they don't know what's impossible because they don't know what is possible. So I have to make this feel impossible again. It's very simple. Now a second ago, tell her, you wiped your finger across and the number came off fairly easy. And if you try again, it doesn't work this time. Pen, you can do the same. Nothing. Hmm. Very easily, now that the phone has been magified, 
If I just take the number, I can now come straight down off the top of the phone. That gets me one seven on the phone, but I'm holding a seven here. So if I toss that up, I can catch the seven back on the phone. If I flick, the seven disappears. If I shake, the seven vanishes. But that's my lucky number. That's, that's what you're probably thinking. Oh, it's his lucky number. He's probably doing it. Uh now, I just have to say, if he's doing all that with a native calculator app, that's really impressive. If it's a custom app, then it's just kind of like, well, someone designed that. But I'm getting this sneaking suspicion that all the moves he was doing, they were kind of like sleight of hand with the native built-in calculator app. And if so, that's really cool. Let's keep going. Um, so let's uh, come up with a number together. Uh, Teller, using your fingers, uh, give me about four numbers. One. Four. That's nine, I think. <laughs> well, that's weirder. Okay, two. Uh, and Penn, will you just put in uh, two or three numbers if you'd like? Wonderful. Uh, now, I'm not pushing any buttons on the back of the phone. You'll notice that I'm not going to touch the power button, the volume button, or the home button. You can see the numbers right there on the screen. If I just give the phone a flick, the numbers disappear. I'll grab the very edges of the phone. You'll notice I'm not touching anywhere near the buttons. If I shake, the numbers come back. But it's because I'm moving the phone, it might be blurry for you. So I'm gonna do it one more time. I'm gonna keep very still and put my, my elbows on the table. And all I'm gonna do is blow. <sighs> numbers disappear. <laughs> Once again, you still may be thinking, it's my phone, so there's yeah. probably something tricky about it. Uh, Penn, can I borrow your, do you have a fruit phone? I do, may I, I do. I have one right in my pocket. And uh, would you like the calculator? Yes. Okay. Sorry. Perfect, we're gonna use your phone. Uh, we're gonna put in uh, a set of numbers together. Okay. So you pick any, uh, any four digits you like. Okay. Two. Two. Five. Two, five. Eight. Eight. Three. Two, five, eight, three, perfect. Uh, Teller, do me a favor, will you hit the clear button on the phone? Wonderful. So you'll notice, pen on your phone, uh, it says C, that stands for- Mine's bigger than yours. Yours, yours is bigger than mine, I appreciate it. <laughs> now you see there's a C on your phone, that stands for clear, and there's an AC on my phone. Seems that stands for all clear, that way there's no number stored on the phone. If I just wave your phone over, you'll see the numbers jump from your phone over to my oh, phone. Yeah. We're gonna do it one more time, but I want you to put the same exact numbers, because I know what you're thinking, I'm holding the phone. So put in 2583. Five, eight, three. And tell her, will you hold your hand out for me? And I'm gonna give you my phone and put it in your hand. Perfect. You can see it says AC, there's 2583. If I just pass the phone, it jumps from my phone to your phone with Teller holding the entire thing. That's your phone. Thank you for letting me your phone. I appreciate it. Thank you both so much. Thank you. Robert Ramirez, everyone! Hey. Oh. So what do you do when you're not on our stage? I am traveling the world doing magic and lecturing and performing, uh, showering, you know, all the, the normal things yes. one would do. Yes. So has magic changed since you've been here last? Yes, a lot. Uh, I've been able to create my own products now and, and release them on different magic websites. And it's been really fun to have people, uh, you know, recognize me from the show and, and enjoyed what I did last time. Uh, so I hope people enjoyed what I did this time too. All right, well, let's see if Penn and Teller know how you made your magic. Okay. All right, Penn and Teller. Okay, all right, I'll give you my opinion before we hear what Penn and Teller have to say. Okay, so I'm still wondering if he's using the built-in calculator app or he has some kind of custom thing on there. He did say later, maybe you'll be suspicious that we're using my phone, so we'll involve Penn's phone also. So at that point, he could have segued into effects that he's able to do with someone else's calculator, but he did all the first half on his phone, which maybe he needed some custom features. I really don't know. I don't do much cell phone magic, and I could be totally wrong. Maybe he's using the built-in calculator. Forgetting about the method for a second, I thought that his presentation was really cool. It was like magic, a lot of things happening here, then it was there. I thought I saw some potentially fishy moves with his hands, but overall it just kind of was one thing after another and you don't really have time to like think back and evaluate too much. So in that sense it was pretty fooling. It's certainly not something I know how to do, although now I can make sevens disappear off my phone. Comment below if you want me to do a street magic video where I'm only making sevens disappear and just blowing people's minds. That could be kind of amusing. Anyway, I think he did a great job. He seems like a professional and I have no idea what Penn and Teller are going to say, if they're going to be fooled or not. As I mentioned, I don't have huge experience with cell phone magic and I'm not sure about Penn and Teller if they do either. So let's just hear what they have to say. Good to see you again, Robert. 
Good to see you too. Wondered why you were going to come in from outside the door? Yeah, I just you kept closing the door, and I was wondering. You know, uh, here's one of those tricks that um, we know enough that people at home might think it's done one way, and it's not. Uh, we've seen a lot of people running iPads and phones and so on that are running some sort of essentially a video on there, a program on there. And what's interesting about this is uh, your timing was such that you were not running a video. You were not timing to something. Uh, we don't think you were doing any of that. We think you've gone in and found all sorts of not just features, but also bugs and glitches and everything else that people just don't know because they've got other things to do besides monkey with the calculator on their phone for, what, 35 hours? <laughs> we did see that uh, with all the digital stuff there, we did see a nice uh, digital maneuver. We think that really nice routine, really, really funny. We think you did not fool us this time, but I'll tell you, your cardboard box is still outside the door. <laughs> Stay there and come back in a year or two. Try again. Is that true? Uh, yes. So... I just have a question, like the last thing is the only thing my question, because it's like not, that's not a, a glitch. Oh, you're right, right. Well, it was, it was such a good routine that I was hoping we could take a screenshot of it, but I didn't get a chance to, to do that. But it was, uh, it was a wonderful routine. Perfect, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so do they know how you did it? I'm pretty sure they do. All right, back to the box, <laughs> Robert Ramirez. Okay, let me go ahead and give you my concluding thoughts. So, a screenshot, huh? He took a screenshot while he was performing, and I guess he switched to the photo of that screenshot for a while, and then went back to the calculator app without us seeing. Maybe when he turned the phone face down. Again, I'm not an expert on cell phone or iPad magic. I don't really do that kind of stuff. But I do gather from what Penn and Teller were saying that perhaps he was not using some kind of special application, and all of his moves like turning the phone, pressing buttons on the side, tweaking it, turning it, were just like features built into the iPhone that he's learned about and has incorporated into this magic performance and if so that's really cool I think that's amazing that's really great I would love to learn this myself as a magician it's always nice to have magic that you can do at a moment's notice without any special props just having your cell phone with you that's why I like magic that involves like a ring or rubber bands because it's very easy to just have on your wrist and do whenever you need to whenever you want to yeah, well, I guess uh, leave your comment below. Tell me what you thought about his performance. Do you enjoy smartphone and tablet magic? Do you like pina coladas and dancing in the rain? Comment below. And now time for Aesop's Fables. Time for your pearl of wisdom. This time I'm gonna do it completely randomly. Let's go uh, right there. We have, well, we have three choices. Usually I like to pick the smallest one, but this time I'm gonna go for the longest one to do something different, to try new things. Anyway, let's go ahead and get this party started. This is chapter 69, for those of you following along at home. Let's see if I can read this without making any mistakes. The peasant and the apple tree. A peasant had an apple tree growing in his garden, which bore no fruit, but merely served to provide a shelter from the heat for the sparrows and grasshoppers, which sat and chirped in its branches. <sighs> Disappointed at its barrenness, he determined to cut it down and went and fetched his axe for the purpose. But when the sparrows and the grasshoppers saw what he was about to do, they begged him to spare it and said to him, If you destroy the tree, we shall, we shall have to seek shelter elsewhere. I made a mistake. We shall have to seek shelter elsewhere, and you will no longer have our merry chirping to enliven your work in the garden. He, however, refused to listen to them and set to work with a will to cut through the trunk. A few strokes showed that it was hollow inside and contained a swarm of bees and a large store of honey. Delighted, he find another mistake. Delighted with his find, he threw down his axe, saying, "The old tree is worth keeping after all." And the moral of the story is, utility is the most men's test of worth. What does that mean? Utility is most men's test of worth. Maybe there's some old English version of utility that I'm not comprehending at the moment. Or perhaps I didn't drink enough coffee. Well, first off, I gotta say that when he discovered the bees inside, I thought they were gonna explode out and attack and kill him. And I thought that was gonna be like his just dessert for ignoring the grasshoppers and the sparrows. So I really predicted that one wrong. I thought it was gonna be like a twist, but apparently it was just great for him that it was full of bees and honey. I would have like screamed and ran the other way because bees and wasps are my biggest paranoia in life. I don't know why I shared that publicly. I feel like somehow that's gonna be bad for me in the future. Someone's gonna kidnap me, 
stick me in a cellar and fill it with bees and honey. Why am I giving out these ideas? This seems like really something I should remove from the video. Or not. Alright, so I don't see how the uh, sparrows and the grasshoppers fit into the story much at all because he just kind of ignored them, chopped the tree down, which was useless, and found honey inside. Utility is most men's test of worth. So just maybe the fact that he was focusing on doing something useful like removing the dead tree and then he had some benefit. So maybe like industriousness is a way to judge what a man is worth. I feel like I'm really reaching right now. Please, one of you, leave a comment below and explain this to me since I'm failing to understand it. All right, so that's pretty much all for this video. By the way, I reacted to three magicians on this episode of Fool Us. So go ahead and check my channel homepage and you'll see the rest of them that you can watch them at your leisure. I'm probably gonna release one of these each day because editing takes time. If you wanna see more videos like this, subscribe, click the notification bell, smash like, and if you feel like supporting me, you can check out my Patreon page. But otherwise, thank you for watching, and I will see you next time.